Sermon 4-9 Put your efforts in spiritual work. Luke chapter 12 verses 25 through 34 And which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after. And your father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Put your effort in spiritual matters. How are you, everyone? How have you been? I heard yesterday was the 15th of the month by the lunar calendar. Oh, is it today? Yes, then today is the 15th of the first month by the lunar calendar. It is one of our folklore days. What do we do on the 15th of January by the lunar calendar? We eat a five-grain meal made of various kinds of grains. And what else do we do? We have fireworks watching the full moon. Please do not play with fire. What we eat on this day? Peanuts, walnuts, pine nuts. Yes, all that is right. But what else do we specially eat? Someone sitting there just said, full moon. Yes, our answer said also, but it meant that they harbor great hope watching the first full moon of each year. How can we eat the full moon? Let's just talk about food. Have a delicious meal this evening. I stayed at Brother Young Known Kim's house last night. When I went there, they brought out five grain meal, peanuts, pine nuts, and so forth. Therefore, I asked them why they brought out such things, and they told me that it was the 15th of the first month by the lunar calendar. And I remembered the 15th of January by the lunar calendar was like this. We used to eat such food and had fireworks on the 15th of the first month by the lunar calendar. But I forgot about it because we have not followed such tradition in modern days. Therefore, we had five grain meal, peanuts, walnuts, and went to bed. I am saying these things because I am just wondering whether you had such things today as well. You do not have to deliberately go out and get such a meal, but go ahead and have some if there is some in your home. In the old days, they set aside the 15th of the first month by the lunar calendar during the winter to have nutritional food like dried mountainous vegetables and five grain meal, nutritionally abundant walnuts and pine nuts in order to avoid malnutrition because the farmers did not have much to eat during the winter. 
if you had enough peanuts and variety of crops normally, then you do not need to have them, especially on the 15th of the first month by the lunar calendar. These days, we live much better than before. Because they did not have much to eat before, they found reasons to set aside a special day like the 15th of January by the lunar calendar and had nutritional food like that during the middle of the winter. You always have fried chicken and seasoned noodles and other highly nutritious food plentifully now. Therefore, you do not need to have special food just because it is the 15th, the first month by the lunar calendar. However, if you want to have some, please prepare it well before you have them. I will not try to hold you back from having them because they are good for health. Anyway, I had much good food thanks to Brother Kim yesterday. I could not eat too much because my stomach becomes bloated even if I eat just a little. I went on a scenic trip around Seoul too and the Kimpo Airport was still there beautifully without much change. However, there were more people there. I do not know if it is because I went there in the morning, but there seemed to be more people and the passport formalities in the airport also became a little stricter. Anyway, we all gave our missionaries a good send-off this morning and got together back home in the afternoon by plane. The sisters went out and took care of some business in Seoul, and I also took care of some things, met in the afternoon, and returned after a good outing. Many things came to my mind while I was coming back, and my body was very tired since I had gone on a long trip. No matter how great the hospitality was at the brothers' home and how comfortable they make me at their home, it is always difficult and tiring when we leave home. Fleshly things come to mind from time to time while riding in a car for a long time. But I also thought a lot about spiritual things as I looked at the sceneries that were passing by. Even though the physical body did not go around to many places, my heart went around diligently thinking about many spiritual things. As I thought about fleshly things, I thought about things like how we can go on living as it would be more difficult in the future as we faced the IMF supervision. Spiritually, I thought about the work of evangelizing the gospel to Russia, the faith that there will be more work of the gospel and the salvation of souls by preaching the gospel to college students through the Nathaniel mission throughout the country starting from March. And I also thought about preaching of the gospel through revival meetings. We will hold meetings starting from the second Wednesday of March. We had plans to hold a revival meeting in April, but we decided to have another meeting in March because it has been a long time since we got together to preach the gospel. I want you to invite many souls to this revival meeting. Anyway, I thought about various things, and many things crossed my mind. That was a good trip. Furthermore, we ministers also got together, heard some stories, and also shared the word together. I thought they also probably have many thoughts of spiritual and fleshly concerns as they live in this world, not just me. First, because we are currently in a difficult situation, I thought about fleshly things, personal things, and then spiritual things such as how much longer can I witness the gospel? It's only been a short while since we have witnessed the gospel in China. And I also think what would have happened by now 
if we did not preach the gospel and establish the ministers there at that time. And what would have happened if we did not print 5,000 books in Chinese? And even in the case of Russia, I think it was very good that we preached the gospel at that time and established God's church and workers there at this time. And I think all the things that we did with faith in the past have turned out well. The things we did with faith were all very appropriate, even from hindsight, and they have all reaped fruits faithfully and wonderfully. What good is it just to worry? We must think of spiritual things. As I think about what work we must do in the future, and I worry that our brothers and sisters, God's people, might struggle with their faith during the age of tribulation because of concerns with basic needs of life, such as what to eat and what to drink, I really think we must not lose faith because of worries in our hearts in the end times about how we should make a living. Especially in these times, we must think how we should live in these end times and how we should keep our faith. It is impossible to keep our faith with the law alone. And as I think about how we could keep the faith, I realize that we, you and I, need to give our all to the work of evangelizing the gospel, the work of saving souls, and live with spiritual thinking only. We cannot help but fall into the worries and snares of life and concerns and anxieties of life if we do not think of spiritual things. We must only think of the spiritual things if we want to live spiritually, if our hearts want to live a spiritually overflowing life of faith. We must only think of the work of saving souls like to whom and how we should preach the gospel. I mean that we must think such spiritual things like to whom we should preach the gospel to and convince them to receive salvation and with what method we should lead them to receive salvation. If we do not think of such things, we fall deeply into fleshly things because human beings are originally prone to become fleshly. I know that we will become like that if we are not careful, as the end draws nearer, we must be more absorbed in saving souls by faith. We must give our hearts to the work of saving souls even more with faith, even though we are weak and we have shortcomings. We must think even more clearly during these times. Are we going to think of spiritual thoughts or are we going to be locked into fleshly things? If we think of fleshly things, we will fall deep into fleshly things immediately. But if we change our thinking and think of spiritual things, our hearts will be filled with spiritual things and we cannot help but do spiritual work. These things just depend on how we think. Although the times are difficult now and we are beings that have flesh, our lives can also be changed depending on our thinking because we are precious beings that have resurrected souls. We think of the work of saving souls and do such work when we think of spiritual things and the concerns of what to eat and what to drink never ends when we think of fleshly things. Our thinking has no end like that. When we think of fleshly things, there are so many things to think about that it seems like there is no end to it. Of course, the spiritual matter does not have an end to it when we think about it. However, we must think of spiritual things. We often fall to fleshly things 
as we live in this world. However, falling into fleshly things must end fast, but instead falling into spiritual things must last long. Although we could fall into fleshly things at any time, we must think of spiritual things from moment to moment and go forth toward the spiritual work. We must not be people who are always drowned in fleshly things just because we thought of fleshly things. We must instead change our thinking and become people who think of spiritual work and concentrate on spiritual work. Therefore, we must only think of spiritual work, the work of saving souls, and keep our thinking focused squarely on that matter itself. Our Lord said in today's scripture passage, And which of you, by worrying, can add one cupid to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. It means that even Solomon's glory was not as splendid as one lily of the field. That no matter how splendidly Solomon lived in this world, God made this one lily of the field more gorgeous. It says, they neither toil nor spin. And this means that the lilies did not even produce thread or spin out some fibroid textile. It is saying that lilies have blossomed even though they did not toil like that because God sowed the lilies and gave the power to blossom to the lilies and bless them. The Lord is telling us not to worry and be anxious about the fleshly things and that we should think of spiritual things as he said that all the glory Solomon had in this world were not as splendid as one lily of the field. He said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. As such, our Lord is telling us to think of the spiritual matter first. We are people who can think of spiritual work first. We who have been born again can think both things. We can also do both kinds of works. That is, we can do fleshly work and the spiritual work as well. A person who has not been born again cannot do spiritual work. Such a person can only do fleshly work. However, People who have received the remission of sins by believing in the water and the blood of Jesus Christ are those who can do spiritual work. Therefore, we must first think of spiritual work and do it accordingly, even though we must also take care of our fleshly needs. There may also be people who think to themselves that they only think of fleshly things and are constantly absorbed with fleshly work and fall into such work and think, I can do this. I am a fleshly person. I can only think of fleshly work. They are bound to give up their faith in the gospel of the water and the spirit. However, you must not be such a person. No matter how we sometimes fall into fleshly things, we are people who can instantly become spiritual when we turn our thoughts to spiritual things. However, it is true that we can only do fleshly works when we are absorbed in fleshly thoughts. Is this true or not? It is true. We are beings that can change from moment to moment. That is why we who are beings that can do both things must think of spiritual work more often. We must think of the work of saving souls, 
Think of witnessing the gospel to students. Think of sharing the gospel to the woman next door and saving her soul. Think of publishing Christian books and other means such as websites that are used for the evangelization of the gospel. We must think only of serving the gospel and evangelizing the gospel by using the material things for the Lord as the gospel. Our thoughts become bright and our hearts and souls can become bright when we think of such things. We become very spiritual people by thinking of spiritual things. Our hearts become full, happy, and joyful due to spiritual thoughts in our hearts. We are not imprisoned inside the flesh only. Although we are people who live in the flesh, we also do spiritual work and actively engage in the spiritual world. Anyone can live like that. Any of God's servants like you and I can be instantly awakened spiritually even though we have fallen into fleshly things momentarily. We are beings that can be transformed. We must be awakened insensibly. We must think of God's work and go forth while doing God's work. In addition, we can also receive help from God's church whenever we want to devote ourselves to spiritual work. Although each one of us is a fleshly person, because we belong to God's church, we can become spiritual people if we come to the church and hear the word and actively engage in God's work. Because the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the church, the spiritual heart manifests in us when we hear the word. We are able to do spiritual work and be transformed because our spiritual heart manifests in us like that. You and I are turning over and over from a spiritual heart to a fleshly heart and vice versa throughout our lifetime. We can live like that at any time. We don't do fleshly work only or spiritual work only because a human being can only do one thing. Do you understand this? God's servants, ministers, and you are all like that. The only difference is that some people think of spiritual work more than other people do. Otherwise, they are all the same. Then, how should we live in these last times? Let's acknowledge first that you and I are people that can do both things like this. Then, how should we live after acknowledging this? We must race with all our effort in the work of witnessing the gospel in this world that does not have many more days left. And we must also think of spiritual work and do spiritual work. How should we do the spiritual work and how should we preach the gospel to them when they do not want to believe it no matter how much we tell them? We must preach the gospel more diligently. What should we do? The only thing we can do is work harder. You know about the life information newspapers, don't you? We now have plans to publish a gospel news bulletin and post some sermons on it. We will insert subtitles and pictures on each sermon with about 8 to 12 pages and publish it monthly. You probably remember that the full gospel church used to publish something like this before. I am saying that we will publish something like that. We will put away small booklets in the storage temporarily and work like this now. And as the number of prints increases and we become better at it, and Minister Ha and Sister Mangman and 
as a few other sisters and brothers who are proficient in computer become better at this? Then we will begin printing out the newspaper of the church nationwide monthly. We will post such things like our mission news and news from overseas mission fields in this newspaper. And we will also publish your testimonies of faith. We will publish this newspaper in color. We are planning to make such things attractively because this is the face of our ministry. The time of tribulation is not far away. So we have to preach the gospel even more diligently. We want to translate and print the sermon books about the gospel of the water and the spirit in each language and send missionaries with them to preach the gospel in each country while the world economy has not become completely distressed. We will send our missionaries to the countries like Bangladesh, the United States, Japan, and other countries where we can sow the seed of the gospel. This is the time to do such work. We must do the work of witnessing the gospel to our family members and souls living in our neighborhood and do the work of witnessing the gospel to the students and people in their workplaces. We must meet the Lord after doing such works. We shall meet the Lord after working diligently for the Lord like this. Although we live in these difficult times, and we must meet the Lord after thinking and doing spiritual works as often as possible, even though we do such fleshly work at times. It means that we must not deny our faith until the end. Do not leave the church until the end. And do not leave the brothers and sisters and stay with them until the end. Leaving this church means leaving the brothers and sisters in God. It does not mean just leaving the building. Leaving the church means leaving God's people, God's servants, and God himself. Leaving the church means exactly that. You must understand that. Therefore, we must not leave the church until the Lord comes, and do not leave our brothers, sisters, and God's servants and live together and maintain social life like that. Be supplied with our necessities from God and join together to do spiritual work, even though there is always much lacking, and do a lot of spiritual works while living in this world. We should meet the Lord after doing the work of preaching the gospel and saving souls like that. We just need to live with faith like that as we face this declining era. There is a hymn that goes, Work for the night is coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the dew is sparkling. Work mid spring flowers. We should work ceaselessly. However, how could we not have some relaxation? We must rest and have relaxation at times. Do not just think, I am only good at spiritual work. In addition, do not just think, I have nothing to do with spiritual work and I am only good with fleshly work. God has given us the ability to do both things well. God gave us both the spirit and the flesh. Therefore, we can do both the spiritual and fleshly works. Some brothers and sisters who only do fleshly things become discouraged and say, I am hopeless at doing spiritual things. But that is a thought from demons. 
We Christians are people who could instantly do spiritual work even while doing fleshly work. And this is also God's power. We born again are people who can be very spiritual on one hand, even though we may be very fleshly at times. That is why the Apostle Paul said such a thing and he was able to serve the gospel throughout his whole life. That was possible thanks to God's power. Therefore, we need to get rid of the extreme thinking that says, I am a person who really does only spiritual work. I do not have such a thing as fleshly work. Or the thinking, I have nothing to do with spiritual work and I just do fleshly work. We must know that we are people who always do spiritual work. Join our efforts together with the church to do the work of serving the gospel and do the spiritual work of saving souls when we think of God's work. On the other hand, we always do fleshly work when we fall into our own thinking and stay by ourselves. Therefore, we are working through the church by uniting our hearts and bringing our efforts together for the spiritual work. We all become spiritual people when we join our efforts together with the church, when we serve the church, and when we do the work of saving souls not by just trying hard to become a spiritual person by ourselves. Even though we are not a spiritual person in the beginning, we can become a spiritual person if we go on serving the gospel and do the work of saving souls. We cannot follow the Lord when we do not even know ourselves at all, and we cannot help but fall into ourselves when we are just absorbed with our own problems and only know ourselves and do not know the Lord. We must know ourselves, know the Lord, and know God's word. And it is wrong to be absorbed with just one side. We must know God as well as ourselves in order to believe in and follow the Lord and do God's work. Doing God's work becomes spiritual food for us. God's work is food for you and me. We can eat spiritual food by doing God's work, and our souls become blessed by witnessing the Lord's gospel by doing the work of saving souls. Our Lord once said to his disciples, You do not know my food. I work because God works even until now. When he witnessed the gospel to the Samaritan woman at the well of Sychar, he says the gospel is the food for him and us, the food for the souls of people who have been born again is produced by doing God's work. The food for our flesh is such things like bread, whole chicken, and bacon. However, when it comes to the spiritual food, doing God's work, especially the work of witnessing the gospel, becomes our spiritual food. Spreading the gospel is our spiritual food. When we preach the gospel, The person hearing it receives the remission of sins. And on the other hand, our soul also becomes very full. Our spirits become content and they can receive nutrition. It is happy and it feels good because it is full and it becomes energetic. We become strong when we witness the gospel. When you are hungry spiritually and when you feel exhausted in your heart, just try to witness the gospel to anyone, whether the person listens to it or not. 
you will become very energetic. You will become energetic regardless of whether he listens to it or not. We become spiritually hungry, exhausted, and fallen asleep when we do not witness the gospel. If you feel spiritually exhausted, just go out and witness the gospel to someone. When that person runs from you because he does not want to hear, then you can follow him and say, Jesus took all your sins as well as my sins upon him by receiving the baptism. Even all your sins have been transferred over to him. Then he will probably become upset and go away thinking, how loathsome. He is really disgusting. I wish I never meet such a person again. Then just say to him back, I would starve to death if not for you. It sounds like Dracula, right? Dracula fills himself up by sucking on human blood. When we see movies, we can see the scene of the cloud covering the moon and Dracula appearing and sucking the blood of a certain person, right? We the righteous are not like Dracula. We do not suck on human blood and steal life energy from others. Instead, we the righteous are people who do the work of saving souls and witnessing the gospel for our food. We feel good and become so full and energetic when we preach the gospel. Therefore, the Apostle Paul told Timothy to preach the gospel whether people listen to him or not, whether in season or out of season. Be ready in season and out of season means whether a person believes or does not believe. The scripture told us to preach the gospel to all people, whether we are ready in season or out of season. How could we also know from the onset whether a person will believe or not believe? People usually do not believe when we witness to them for the first time. It is the same when we preach the gospel to them the second time. What happens when we preach to them for the third time? Usually, they say something terrible to us. When we preach to them the fourth time, they hide from us whenever they see us as if we were their enemies. When we run into them while walking on the street, we see them in the back alley. They just disappear. We see them about 10 meters away, but then they just disappear through an adjacent street. When we see them coming up the stairs, they go back where they came. Witnessing the gospel is not easy like this. Then what do we do? We must continue preaching the gospel with the heart saying, just believe in the gospel. No matter how much the person despises us for one month, two months, and throughout the whole year, we must witness our food to them, receive the food through that, and go forth willingly with love and praise. There is a soul named Mr. Hawang so-and-so in our church in Deju. And he is a son of an elder in a Presbyterian church nearby. Anyway, he is married to a sister of our faith and he suffers from mental disease and is not normal. However, he does not believe in the gospel, even though they have been witnessing the gospel to him for over a year. He does such things like closing the Bible and getting up and leaving while listening to the gospel word. And in the midst of all this, the minister of Dejong Church asked him last week whether he believes in the gospel, and he said this is the real gospel, 
and said with his own mouth that he believed. Until then, the minister had the attitude. Pastor, there is such and such a stubborn soul here. Should I beat him up? Of course, he meant beating him up with the word, not physically. Therefore, I said to the minister, he is like that because he does not know any better. Have compassion toward him. What would happen to his wife, our sister, if we beat him up with the word every time he comes to church? Just let him alone. Anyway, just be patient and let him alone if he just comes to the church and listens. The minister refrained from the heart that even wanted to beat him up with the word a few times and preached the word until now and his loving heart was finally delivered. He said himself with his mouth that this gospel is true and believed. After hearing that, I thought, what a stubborn soul. Finally, a soul has received the remission of sins. This gospel of the water and the spirit is a big joy to us. The Lord is our life and joy. However, there is another thing that gives us life and joy. The gospel of the water and the spirit that the Lord has given to us, that has blotted out all our sins by Jesus receiving the baptism and that he received all our sins and penalty by being nailed to the cross is our true life and joy. This gospel is food and joy for you and me. And it is also the life of all the souls. We must share this fact with others. We also become energized when we just preach this. We become energized when we do God's work. We just need to do this work of the Lord composedly. Whether a person listens or not, we just need to preach the gospel of the Lord to whomever we meet. Regardless, we must preach the gospel whether it takes one second to preach the gospel or whether it takes two hours or one year to witness the gospel to a person. Only then can we receive the food for our hearts and live according to God's will. You and I must become people who preach the gospel and bring souls to the church at all times in this last era, in these end times. We will hold a revival meeting starting from about March 10th. Compose your hearts, pray for souls diligently until then. Bring many souls at that time to the church and thereby preach the gospel to them. Do not say, it's kind of awkward when I ask you to bring souls to the meeting and do not forget that witnessing the gospel and bringing souls to revival meetings consequently becomes your food. The gospel becomes your food and your heart becomes energized and your faith grows. I am not saying that you should only do that, but I am saying that we must witness the gospel as we live in this world. The Lord said to his disciples, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about the body, what you will put on. Look at the lilies of the field. The lilies blossom splendidly, even though no one has sown and toiled for them. God has supplied things to eat, wear, and all other things to the lilies. However, you and I are people who always worry about how we could make a living, what to eat, what to wear, and how we could live and how our souls could live. 
Honestly, I worry about such things. I do not deny this before the presence of God. However, on the other hand, I also have faith that God would at least take care of one person like me. I really believe that God would at least take care of one person like me, feed me, and clothe me. I also believe that God would clothe and feed our churches nationwide as well. However, I do worry that our saints would suffer too much because they do not have basic necessities of life in the end times, during the really difficult times. And I think they should at least have their basic needs of food and shelter taken care of as they live in this world. Those who are not born again will be none of my business at that time. But I think that the born again people must at least survive without going through so much difficulty, no matter how they live. I think about how the righteous would deal with the situation when the time of tribulation comes and how we would take care of fleshly things and how we would receive the spiritual food and live spiritually during those times. Then I come to realize and believe that we live by witnessing the gospel to others and preach the gospel. We, therefore, must definitely do the spiritual work. We must witness the gospel, and we must prepare well the matters related to the flesh also ahead of time. How will the temperature be during the summer in our country? Meteorologists say, it will rain heavily. They say this as they forecast the changes in weather conditions in our country in the future. What should we do when it rains so much in the summer? We just need to prepare well because we could see such things easily. Because we know that such things will occur frequently. For example, I am saying that in every country, it will rain so much that they will not be able to handle it and water will not drain through the sewage and water will overflow and most basements will be flooded. There will be many things to do then. It is fortunate that our church is on the second floor. I do not like the first floor. I like the second floor because there is less chance to be flooded with water even during the flood. Even such natural disasters and unusual climate changes cannot be handled properly just because we know about them ahead of time and worry about them. Instead, we can overcome them only when we believe in God's word that many such things will occur as the end times draw near and prepare for them. We can endure them well, even if disasters strike this world, if we just believe in the Lord and prepare faith to overcome them. We can say with composure, oh, they say a great flood is coming. We have a flood here and eat good food in our homes with composure and sing praises to the Lord and accept disasters like that. Soon, there will come a time when we will not be able to preach the gospel even if we want to. We must get together diligently now, hear the word diligently, and prepare ahead of time because there will come a time when you will not be able to gather together, even if you want to. When such tribulation strikes us, there will be no one to preach the word. So each of us will have to keep our faith firmly individually. We must always remember the word of the Lord that says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness 
and all these things shall be added to you. We must actually seek his kingdom and his righteousness. We receive food for our spirit and our flesh when we follow the Lord and witness the gospel and live accordingly like that. We must accept and believe this fact in our hearts. We must believe that our hearts become rich and our faith grows. And God, on the other hand, blesses all the things our flesh does when we do the work of witnessing the gospel. Actually, we Christians receive the blessings from the Lord through the work of witnessing the gospel. Serving the gospel is exactly the shortcut to receive the blessings. You cannot but become wealthy when you serve the gospel. You cannot but live well and all things you do cannot but have good outcome. Isn't it God's blessings that we receive the blessing even when we do not do well and we are not prudent? That is the graceful blessing of the Lord. The secret to our living well is like this. The Lord said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then we become happy. God's servants, brothers, and sisters alike must witness the gospel as we live in this world. In summary, the most important thing is to preach the gospel. Even us gathering here is for the preaching of the gospel, and even us keeping our faith is for the preaching of the gospel. Therefore, we must do the work of witnessing the gospel to each and every soul as we face the end times. That is correct. We must witness the gospel more diligently as we live in these end times. We might publish the gospel newspaper bulletin from this month, as I said just before. Then we just need to deliver them to each home. We are preparing some ministries step by step and witnessing the gospel without being impatient because we have such faith. We will be the true winner if we could have the last laugh, even though we do this slowly. Even if a person does something with much celebration and it seems like he is going forth in front, the one who cries in the end is the loser. The important thing is who will have the last laugh. I will laugh when I stand before the presence of God. I also believe that all our endeavor to serve the gospel will surely blossom flower and reap fruit. I have such faith in my heart. When we do the work of preaching the gospel, let's not be discouraged. Let's not be lazy and do the work consistently, whether in season or out of season. We must eat well, wear clothes well, and sleep well. God will give to us when we need something fleshly. Do not be so caught up with the thing you need fleshly and make witnessing the gospel your priority. And first do the work of joining your hearts together with the church, God's servants, and fellow believers. Then all things that are entrusted to you unfold well. All the problems of life will be untangled by the Lord as the entangled thread becomes untangled. Everything will turn out well. Do not worry about anything fleshly. Do not worry about what to eat, what to drink, and how you can make a living. You do not have much to worry about even during the end times 
if you dwell in the Lord. You just need to handle everything with faith. Let's live with faith. Let's preach the gospel. Let's pray before the presence of God. God, let us evangelize the gospel this year. Give us faith. Let us witness the gospel to many souls. Let us and many people through us eat the spiritual food plentifully. Cause many souls to receive salvation. And let this be a year that we receive many blessings before the presence of God. Amen.